Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. This week I want to share with you some information about the extensibility model of the Microsoft Graph. In fact, from an extensibility viewpoint in the Microsoft Graph, we have at least two different flavors, the open extensions and the schema extensions. Today I want to talk with you about the open extensions and in the near future we will cover the schema extensions uh, too. The open extensions allow you to add custom data, custom metadata to some of the entities that you can access through the Microsoft Graph. And those custom metadata can be defined and used based on a key value pair that is really useful whenever you want to add a custom set of metadata to an object. You can add, update or delete those custom metadata uh, applied to some of the entities that you can access to the graph. And uh, in order to do that, you need to register your open extension and the open extension will need to have a name which will be based on a top level domain of a domain that you own. Specifically, you will need to use the reverse top level domain of a domain that you own. So for example, in my company I have pscs.com and the open extension name could be com.psys dot the name of my open extension. You can extend entities like, for example, uh, uh, contact uh, users, uh, mail messages or posts uh, in a group uh, or calendar events in a group calendar and stuff like that. And nowadays those are the entities that you can extend using the open extensions. Whenever you use the open extensions, there are of course uh, some limits that you need to be aware of. First of all, the open extensions values cannot be used to search and filter content. So you cannot make a query using the graph to extract, for example, all of the user with a specific value in a metadata of an open extension. But once you have an entity, you can read the open extension metadata values. Moreover, whenever you create an open extension, every single open extension can use up to 2 KB of data, including the extension definition. And every single app can have up to two open extensions for every single entity instance. Last but not least, if you plan to use the open extensions to store uh, business related data, be aware of the fact that more in general, not only the open extension, but more in general, the Microsoft Graph is not transactional. So if you need to store something which will need to be transactional, better to use uh, something like a backend resource manager, which could be, for example, a relational database or something like that. If you are okay with not having uh, transactional access uh, to the resources, you're good to go and you're good to use uh, the open uh, extensions of the Microsoft Graph. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to play with the open extensions of Microsoft Graph. Here we are in the Graph Explorer and here I have uh, a request for a specific Office 365 group uh, which is inside of my target tenant. As you can see here, I have the metadata of my Office 365 group and I can make a request for the extensions property of this group. Let me run the query. And as you can see, that property is now empty. I have an empty array of extensions. I can use the post request targeting the collection of extensions and I can provide in the body of my request an extension with a specific name following the rule I told you, so the reverse top level domain dot the name of my extension and a bunch of custom properties which in this scenario are just some random properties for a hypothetical project that I'm running on top of the Office 365 group that I'm targeting. If I make a post request with this JSON request, I will get back a 201 response code and I will get my uh, Office 365 group extended. In fact, if I make yet another GET request for the extensions of this group, you will be able to see that in the value property now we have inside the array one instance of an object which is the extension I just defined. Of course, we can not only add a new extension, but we can also uh, update the content of an extension. So if we make a patch request targeting the specific extension that we want to update, in my case, this is the name of my extension, I can just provide in the body of the request an updated project name, a start date, end date, and an updated resource value, or whatever else you like to update. I can run the query and I will update my target extensions. In fact, if I now make another GET request for that specific extension, I will be able to see that I have my updated data. Of course, I can also delete an extension if I want. I simply need to use the delete uh, uh, HTTP method and I have to provide the unique ID of my extension through the collection of extensions. And by doing that, 
I will completely remove my extension and I will have a fully cleaned up uh, set of extensions back uh, in my uh, Office 365 group. That's really easy to play with the uh, open extensions and feel free to enjoy them. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and you found it useful and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week.